everyone. We're going to start on the fundamentals of spectrophotometry, and spectrophotometry is a method that uses light to measure concentration, uses light to measure concentration, and this is our outline for this topic, and we'll begin with the properties of light. You may remember that sometimes we think of light as a wave, sometimes we think of it as a particle. When we think of, a, of light as a wave, we might imagine a wave propagating through space where the distance between two wave crests is called the wavelength or lambda. So lambda means wavelength. And then if you look closely at this wave, from this point to this point, let me just maybe make a dotted line, we have traveled one cycle. So we can also define the frequency of a wave as nu. And the units for frequency are cycles per second, or sometimes we just say reciprocal seconds, and that's a hertz. The distance for wavelength, well, it depends on what region of the electromagnetic spectrum you're in, but I think for us, we'll probably be using nanometers for the most part. Now, when we think of light as a wave, this equation is useful. C equals lambda nu, where C is the speed of light. And I think that's 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So I guess if you're using this equation, you better make sure the units for wavelength are in meters. So light has this wave nature, but sometimes we think of it as a particle or a little packet of energy. And when we think of light as a particle or maybe a photon, we use this equation. The energy of that photon equals h times nu. So again, nu is frequency, h is Planck's constant, and I think maybe I'll let you look up Planck's constant on your own. And notice that both of these equations have lambda, I'm sorry, have nu, the frequency, in common. So maybe we can rearrange this equation for nu, that equals c over lambda, and maybe we could plug that in right here and get another equation for energy. Wouldn't that be hc over lambda? So these equations would be useful for you to remember as you do your homework and as we keep working through spectrophotometry. Remember I said that the units of wavelength kind of depend on what region of the, electromagne of the electromagnetic spectrum you're in? Let's take a look at it. Here it is, the electromagnetic spectrum. Notice all of the major regions, gamma, X-ray, UV, that's how I like to call ultraviolet, the visible region, infrared or IR, microwave and radio. Down at this end, notice it says high frequency. Well, if you remember this equation, E equals lambda nu, if you increase the frequency, you're at high energy. So this is the high energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum, and this would be the low energy end of the spectrum. And look at these wavelengths. Look how short these wavelengths are at the high energy end. So high energy means short wavelengths. Again, look how small these wavelengths are, just a fraction of a nanometer. And look over here at this low energy end. Look how long those wavelengths are. And I like to remind students that that's a little tricky you can remember. Low energy means long wavelength. Now I want you to remember the wavelength region of the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum goes from about 400 nanometers to about 
800 nanometers. That's a little rough. And I do want you to remember the UV region. It goes from about 200 nanometers to 400 nanometers. Let's talk about how these different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum interact with matter. And we won't talk about all of them. Let's begin with the UV visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. When you shine light with wavelengths ranging from 200 to say 800 nanometers, again, that's UV visible radiation, what does it do to atoms or molecules? Well, it excites outer electrons. It excites outer electrons, so we can describe that interaction as electronic. How does infrared radiation interact with matter? Well, you may be somewhat familiar with this. If you've taken organic before, you may remember that infrared radiation bends and stretches bonds in molecules. It causes them to vibrate. So we can describe this interaction as vibrational. And then the only other region we'll briefly mention is the microwave region. Here's the microwave region. And how does microwave radiation interact with matter? We describe that as rotational. It causes molecules to rotate. So I think that's about it for the properties of light. Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to say about the properties of light. What did the photon say when it walked into the hotel? I'm traveling light.